Hi, it's Dino Longuera here at Majestic Arms, and there's a new gun out there, and we've got a new product line. It's the Ruger Mark IV. Today we've got one of their Hunter versions, and we're going to install the Majestic Arms Master Grade Kit and a locking block and a couple of other parts. So let's get started. The very first thing we're going to do, as always, check to make sure your gun is not loaded. Remove your magazine and set that aside. Now you're going to close the bolt. The safety must be in the safe position, and you can push on the back now to dismantle it. I'm going to take the whole upper receiver and barrel group and lay that aside. Put on my headset so I can see what I'm doing. The first thing we're going to do is remove the grips using a 332 Allen key. And we'll do that all four screws. The one grip panel, set it aside. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay, now what you have to be mindful of, these guns have a magazine ejector at the base of the right side of the frame. It helps shove the magazine out. It's a nice idea, great for competitive shooting. But you want to remove that because it's going to pop out while you're working. So lay your finger over it, it's got a spring, push forward and ease it out. Then take that out, the magazine ejector, and lie it aside. Next thing we're going to do is we have to remove the right side ambidextrous safety, so we'll need a sixteenth of an inch Allen key. And put it into the little set screw, unscrew that, take off the screw, take off the right side safety, keep them together so you don't lose anything. And lay those aside. Now at this point we're ready to begin to dismantle the internal frame arrangement. So what we're going to do, this gun still has its magazine disconnector intact, we're going to dry fire the gun. We're going to put a magazine in place, we're going to turn our safety to the fire position. I like to put my thumb in front, catch the hammer, don't let it fly too forward or hurt the gun. And now we've released all the tension on the mainspring, we can start to dismantle that. Okay, what we're going to do we're going to grasp the safety lever on the left side of the frame and we're going to wiggle it up and down and it'll start to come out. You have to be mindful, you got a little spring and plunger there you don't want to lose. And now we're going to take, what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to remove it just far enough. I'm going to keep inching it out until I can get my hammer arrangement out. But I'm going to leave the safety in there for illustration. Alright, we went a little too far. So now we're going to take that out, hinge our disconnect the bar up. There's our entire hammer arrangement with the magazine disconnector. We're going to take the safety out. This gun has a two-part safety. There's an internal piece and there's an external piece. You have to be mindful of that. Now we can remove our safety. Next thing we want to do is we want to remove our sear. I'm going to turn it this way. Give the camera a chance to catch up to me. Our sear is right here, mounted on a pin in the frame. The spring that activates the sear comes down here in this window and bears upon the frame. And that gives the sear tension, see if I can illustrate that for you, so it's always pushed backward against the hammer. It's an easy thing to remove. I'm going to take a 332 punch. I'm just going to push it out. In this particular case I got the pin out. And we're going to just turn it upside down. We're going to dump out the sear and the original sear spring. Next thing we have to take out is in the center of your trigger you have a spring and a plunger which activates your disconnect the bar and we're going to remove those. I'm just going to turn it upside down and drop them out. Now what we're ready to do is we're ready to remove our trigger. But first we want to take off the external bolt release lever. I'm going to use a sixteenth of an inch allen key. I'm going to unscrew that. I'm going to remove that lever, I'm going to set it aside with the little screw not to lose it. Now we're ready to take out our trigger. And first what we're going to do is we've got a pin, there's a retainer spring that keeps that pin in place, I'll show you in a moment. But internally on the left side is your internal bolt lock. You've got a little spring in the corner, the pin goes through, the spring catches it, it goes through the trigger, and it also goes through the internal bolt lock and keeps that in place. So what we're going to do is we're going to lay the frame down, I'm going to take an eighth of an inch punch, and I'm going to tap directly on the trigger pin. Here we go. 
It'll usually come out pretty easily. At that point, once I have that out, I can remove my internal bolt lock. I'm going to lay that aside also, and I'll put it down with my external so it's easy to remember. If you can, the easy thing to do is to ease this pin out just far enough to release the trigger. And usually that won't happen. This one all came out. That's fine. We're going to teach you how to put it all back together. Now we're not going to use the trigger or the disconnector bar anymore. So let's just take a quick look at this spring. I'm going to lay it on this side of the frame externally to give you an idea how it works. On the inside, the small little hook comes through the hole, which will be visible on your gun. The spring lays underneath the hole. Let me see if I can orient this so you can see how it's going to work inside your gun. Give me one second. Here we go. It's not going to happen. It sits under the hole like that. Your trigger pin has a groove that this spring will engage and keep it in place. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check the frame before we put the new trigger in. What I like to do is I like to check the edges of the trigger window for any rough edges or burrs. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a fine needle file. This one happens to be a diamond cut. A regular small one will do as well. I'm not going to remove any real material, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a few passes and I want to break any rough edges so that that trigger window is smooth and clean. And I got it on the one side. I'm going to take what I'm going to do is take a break, come out here, I'm going to hold the file and show you exactly what I've done. I've just run it along here and I've broken the edge. Now what I like to do after I've done that is I like to make sure that the inside walls of the trigger window are smooth and are going to give us a nice function. I'm going to use a hand file but I'm not going to file or cut anything. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put some 240 sand cloth over my file just like that. Keeping it flat, I'm going to come in and I'm going to take a few passes. I'm not looking to really change much, just looking to make sure it's smooth and I'm going to smooth in the inside of each side of that window. You will see some high spots where you've cleaned it up a bit. And now we're ready to begin to install the new trigger. So we're going to take the trigger pin retainer spring. I'm going to orient it just like that. I'm going to hold it from here. I have to reach inside and hook it into the frame and get it in. I don't know if the camera can catch this. Just like that. Now the tricky part is I've got to get this pin in and I've got to get to keep the spring under the pin. And the way I like to do this is to take a punch, compress the spring, when I get it done, I'll show you. I'll give you a better illustration. I'll come out. I'll take a break and see if we can catch that on camera. How the spring is now under the pin. So when we put the pin in place, we're going to lock it all up. Now we'll take our new trigger and our new disconnector bar. The screw has not yet been set or loctited. These disconnector bars do need to be hand fitted. We're going to teach you how to do that. So what we're going to do, we're going to take the trigger on the disconnector bar, we're going to bring it in, we're going to find the pin in the hole and start to push it through. So now we've got the pin started through the trigger. We must return our internal bolt lock. That's this triangular shaped piece of metal. It's going to have to go inside the frame. There's a spring in the corner that bears on the corner of this and it's going to line up just like that and the pin's going to lock it in place. So what we're going to do, I'm going to take it and bring it into the frame like so. I'm going to look through the hole and align that part. And I should feel a slight amount of spring tension when I'm in the right spot. The pin will actually push in at that point with your finger. That internal bolt lock should have spring tension just like so. Okay, 
Now we're ready to put in the new sear that comes with your master grade kit along with the new sear spring. First thing I'd like to show you is the orientation of the sear spring. It has a long leg and a short leg and it has three coils. The long leg goes flush against the frame internally with the three coils towards the center of the frame. This is a bit of a trick. What I'm going to use is a pair of forceps and I'm going to hold the short section of the spring just like so. I've got my pin ready. I'm going to put the pin through the hole. I'm going to bring my sear spring in, slide it through the window, and I'm going to slide it onto the pin. Again, I'll take a break. I don't know if the camera can catch that. Now we're ready to put the new sear in. Let me show you the orientation of the sear. I've got this pin in the spring captivated with my finger so they're not going to fall out. Let me just push that back into place a little bit better. This is the orientation of the sear. You've got a protrubens here which faces the back of the frame. It's going to go into the frame just like that. So, what we have to do, this part's a bit tricky, the sear spring must go all the way to the left side of the frame. I'm going to get my sear set up in my forceps. I'm going to hold it just like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it down and I'm going to walk it forward against the spring. When I feel the tension, I'm going to push on that pin and finish it. So what I'm going to do is you have to move the pin all the way over just enough to keep the spring in the frame. And this is where it gets tricky. Bring your sear in. And how about that? We had the sear spring fall off. No big deal. Happens all the time. Let's just put the sear spring back on the pin and we'll continue. So, once again, that's the orientation of your sear spring. Bring it in. Slide the pin through. Captivate the sear spring up against the left side of the frame. The notch on that side Here's the orientation of my sear. I have to push the pin out of the way. Enough to keep the spring in place, but out of the way enough to let the sear in. And the sear spring bears on the frame like so. Now at this point, again I'll take a little bit of a break, see if the camera can catch it. The sear should have spring tension, pushing it backward toward the hammer at all times. Okay, that installation is complete. Now the safety is a little bit of a trick also, because it's a two-piece arrangement. So the first thing we have to do is we have to get the internal safety piece back into the frame and properly oriented with the sear. Do it in a little bit of an awkward position so hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I'm pushing the sear forward. You'll see it move past the frame back here. That's how you'll know you're in the right spot. Bringing my safety in. Orienting it. Looking through the hole. It lines up. And I've got what I need. Now your external safety. You have to be very mindful. The very end of that shaft has got two small tabs to activate the ambidextrous safety on the right side. We want to bring that in get it through the frame and this is where it gets tricky again just like so to keep it together. We have to also be mindful that at the end of this external safety we have a spring and a plunger. That spring and a plunger wants to go for a ride if you're not being careful. What we'll do at this point is we'll take the trigger spring and the trigger plunger and we'll put them back into the center of the trigger. Now we have to get our hammer and sear arrangement ready to install. So what we're going to do is, here's the new hammer, comes with the spacer. What we did differently is we machined our hammer so that you may either keep or omit the magazine disconnector. The choice is yours right in the package. You don't need any additional kits, so you can do it either way. We're going to assemble this gun without a magazine disconnector. 
This is your entire arrangement from the factory. You've got a spring wrapped around the bushing, around the magazine disconnector, and on the other side, the mag disconnector rides over the hammer strut pin just enough to keep it in place. So the first thing we want to do is we want to remove the internal bushing. The internal bushing has a groove that the spring rides in, and by pinching the two halves together, we'll expand the spring enough to let the internal bushing out. And I know my hands are in the way. Once I got it, right now I've compressed the spring, the bushing has let go. I've removed the bushing, we're going to reuse that. I can take out my magazine disconnect spring, we're not going to reuse that. I can take out my magazine disconnector piece, we're not going to reuse that in this case. But we do want the strut and the pin from the original hammer. So, they usually fit very, very loosely. I'm going to take a 332 punch. It's a real easy task. Just push it out, and now we can lay the original hammer aside. I'd like to make a note on working on these guns. The hammer strut on a Mark IV is symmetrical, but I've seen a couple of them come in here with an old style hammer strut that is not symmetrical. If yours isn't symmetrical, the curved radius must face the back of the frame. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the hammer strut and we're going to install it into the new hammer. It's a very simple arrangement and we're going to put the pin in place. I know my big hands are in the way and you can't see a lot. As soon as I'm done I'll show you a better illustration. Just like so. What we're going to do, I'm keeping my finger to hold that in place, and now we're going to put the bushing in from the right side of the hammer and we're going to put the spacer on the left side of the hammer. The spacer overrides the strut pin and retains it in place just like the original magazine disconnector. And as I mentioned earlier, this tab on your disconnector bar is oversized for final fittings. So we're going to first put it in, we're going to check it, it won't function, and then I'm going to show you how to begin the fitting operation. So we take our frame arrangement, the bushing goes into the center of the disconnector bar, and what's interesting here also, similar to the older guns, this little strut must find itself into that little silver cup of your mainspring housing assembly. And that's what gives your hammer the power and returns it. And as happens, I laid it down, the little pin fell out. So we're just going to take a little reset on this very quickly. I'll put my strut back into my hammer. I'll take the hammer retainer pin. Give me a little bit of grief here. Take a second. Pushing to the right side of the hammer, spacing to the left side. What is critical is once you get this assembled, to keep that strut pin from falling out, you have to hold it as an assembly. It goes into the center of the disconnector bar. I'm going to look into the frame. I'm going to see that the strut finds itself into the mainspring housing. This one also, what I like to do is look through the hole. Align the hammer, and this one is a little bit tricky. I'm going to get to that in a moment. Here's where it gets tricky. As you get your internal safety in, you must start the two little tabs into the hole, but it won't go any further. Once you have those two little tabs in the hole, now we're ready to replace the safety into the frame. But what we have to do is the internal safety piece has a hole in it that must line up to allow this safety back in. And the way I like to do that is I'll do this, I'll pick it up, and I know again you might not be able to see a lot, I'm holding that internal safety in the spot so that its opening aligns with the external safety. And then I'll turn the frame upside down. I'll take a break and see if the camera can catch that because now we have the little spring and plunger which must be compressed to allow this external safety to go all the way back into the frame. So, make sure the internal hole is lined up. Bring your external safety up to that position. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my punch in. I'm going to compress the spring and plunger. And if I've got it all lined up, click, she'll snap right back into place with the safety in the on position. And here's the fun part. The little strut has to line itself up with the mainspring housing cup. Turn the safety off. Cock your hammer. Okay, now at this point, we have no trigger. The reason we have no trigger is now we must fit the little disconnector bar tab. And it must ride up behind the sear 
to move the sear out of the way to allow the gun to fire. The reason we leave that tab oversized is what we're going to do is we're going to give you the shortest possible stroke on the trigger as close to a true single stage trigger as possible. But the gun will not dry fire now. So what we're going to do is the safety is in the fire position. I'm going to put a little bit of pressure on the hammer backward and I'm going to reach inside I'm going to manually push the sear out of the way. I'm going to simulate a dry fire. Now I've taken the tension off and this is the part I'll be the first to admit requires a lot of dexterity and it can be tricky. I'm going to inch out the safety just enough to allow me to get my hammer out. And sometimes it's easier than others. There we go. Brought that out. And again, this assembly continuously wants to fall apart. Lay that aside. Now we also have to be mindful we've got that little spring and plunger. What I'm going to do, so I don't lose things, is I'm going to put my internal safety back in a little bit further. That spring and plunger continuously wants to go for a ride, so just take them out. I'm going to turn my frame this way. This is the tab of the disconnector that we're going to fit. In this particular case, I'm going to take a needle file and I'm going to begin to remove some material. Now the average amount of material that you'll need to remove is only going to be between 8 and 12 thousandths of an inch. We can always take more off but we can't put any back so let's do this slowly and methodically. I'm going to bring in my file, I'm going to hold my disconnector bar firmly and I'm going to take a few passes to get a baseline of operation. Holding it square, cutting that notch nice and square. That should be a few thousandths of an inch. Let's do a trial fit and see where we're at. Once again, draw out your safety just so that the tabs keep the internal piece in place. Take your whole assembly into the disconnector bar. Strut has to find itself to the mainspring housing assembly. Bring it in. Look through the window. Apply pressure on your external safety. Bring it in until the two little tabs engage the hole. Go back to the rigmarole from earlier. Pull your internal safety piece upward. Hold it. Turn the frame upside down. Now I'll be able to compress the spring in the plunger and push it back into place. Let's put it to the fire position. Let us dry fire. Let's set it up. And we need more. We don't have anything. Once again, we're going to take, push the sear out of the way, simulate a dry fire. Pull my safety out enough to allow the hammer assembly out. Sometimes you have to move this here a little bit to make this happen. couple of thousands off. Just bring in the plunger back in the center of the trigger. Spacer on the opposite side. Assembly. Look inside, see the little strut, look through the window, get my safety in place, get the two little tabs started in the hole, back to the internal safety, up, hold it in the up position, turn the frame around, compress the spring in the plunger, put the safety back in, down to the fire position, let's give it a check. Now we've got some trigger action. The gun dry fires. Now we want to finish the settings. We're very, very close to a complete job now. I want to illustrate this. Here's how we're going to check it. We're going to put our thumb here. We're going to dry fire the pistol. The hammer goes forward. The gun would discharge. As the bolt comes back, it recocks the hammer. It pushes down on the disconnector bar. The sear has recaptivated the hammer. And I release my trigger. And you'll see 
Now it's resetting, but it's a little sticky. I can feel a little stick there, and it's a little rough. That's perfect. It's right where we want to be. We're in the home stretch. We have to do one more fitting. Again, I'm going to slide this safety out, trying to do it to keep the internal safety in place. I'm going to remove my hammer assembly. I've got a spring and a plunger in the middle of the trigger that can get lost, but I'm going to put the safety back in. I'm going to take out the trigger spring and plunger, and I'm going to take another thousandth or two off that tab, holding my frame like this, coming in square. Remember the golden rule of any filing or honing. You can always take a little bit more off, but you can't put anything back. What I am going to do now is I'm going to switch to a half inch aluminum oxide stone from Brownells. I'm going to hold it square to the disconnector bar and I want to give that a nice clean smooth finish. Okay, a couple of passes that way. But what I also like to do is I want to break the corner. I don't want it to have a rough bird edge. I'm going to come out to the edge of the bench. Hopefully the camera can keep up. I'm going to bring my stone on an edge angle just like that but just enough to break the edge then I'm going to wrap it and I'm going to do the same thing on that corner so I'm going to come over to the edge here a couple of passes turn it on its edge I can see I've got a nice clean bevel on each corner of that disconnect bar. I'm very sorry that our camera won't be able to come in that close and show you how I've just given them nice little edge breaks. Let's go reassemble it again and do another function check. I'm going to take my spring for the trigger, drop it into the center. I'm going to take my plunger for the trigger, drop that back into the center. I'm going to take my hammer, put the spacing on it so it keeps it all together. Once again, we've got to move our safety out and just enough to keep the internal safety in place. Bring this all into place. Bring this down. Look through the window on this side of the frame. Get the tab started. Back to the internal safety. Bring it upward. Hold it with your finger. Wrap it around. Punch, compress. Put that back in. Turn it to the fire position. Cock my hammer. Now I'm going to do the test again. We've got now a very short stroke on the trigger. You can see about a sixteenth of an inch, as close to a true single stage as you can get. And I'm going to dry fire it, simulate recocking it, push down on the disconnector, and when I release the trigger, that disconnector bar should come up and reset itself right behind the trigger. This one's doing it beautifully. Do it again. Slowly release your trigger. And you saw how the disconnector bar came right back up to reset for the next shot. And see how she's still hanging up just a little bit? Okay, that means we want one more thousandth. Remember, if you quickly release the trigger, the bar will jump into place. But you want to slowly and gently do it to make sure you've got enough clearance for that bar to always get back up behind this here. Little safety jumped out of our spring and plunger jumped out of our safety, which you have to be mindful of. I'm drawing the safety out enough to release the hammer, but not enough to make the internal safety piece fall out. And if it does, It'll, it, it happens, and we'll come back and we'll put it back in. There we go. So I'm going to pivot this out. i push my safety back in to keep that in there. I'm going to take out the spring and plunger, and I'm going to give this maybe two thousandths of an inch more clearance, finish it up with the stone, and we should be good to go. plunger back into the center of the trigger. Draw out the safety, just enough to keep the internal safety in place. Take our hammer arrangement into the center of the disconnector bar, look for the strut to find itself into the mainspring. Come over to this side of the frame, look through the hole to find the alignment. Get my safety started just enough for the two tabs to go into the hole. I'm going to come back to my internal safety. I'm going to lift it up. I'm going to hold it in place. I'm going to turn the frame over. Compress the spring and the plunger. Into the 
fire position, cock the hammer, fire, disconnect, beautiful. Slow release, disconnect the bar, comes right back up and gets right back on the job. At this point, lock your safety on, pull the trigger about 10 times, nothing should happen, obviously it should not dry fire, turn your safety off and you're good. Now, last thing we're going to do is your trigger has an over travel adjustment screw. The whole idea is to allow the sear to move just far enough to release the hammer without the trigger continuing in its motion. Gives you a nice crisp feeling. So what I'm going to do is that uses a 1 16th of an inch Allen key that's included in your kit. You can look inside and see how far does the sear move beyond the hammer. This one needs a decent amount of adjustment. So what we're going to do, I can guesstimate this one's going to be about a turn. I'm going to turn the adjustment screw, and when I'm done, unfortunately, you got to dismantle this whole thing and then lock tight that screw adjustment. So, oftentimes, what I'll do is I'll set the whole gun up, and then I'll stop, take it apart, apply Loctite, and you got to quickly, you got 20 minutes to work once you've applied the Loctite. Reassemble it, set that, and then set it aside for half an hour. Okay, still wants a little bit more. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a break and I'm going to come up here, see if our camera can see that sear moving. And as I pull the trigger, I dry fired it, recocked it, and you can see, I'm going to go back and forth holding the hammer so you can see how the sear moves. And what we want to do is we want to give it the least amount of motion with quick reliable function. So what we're going to do now is we're going to give this just another half a turn and that should give me just the setting I want. And I'm going to look at my sear a little bit more. Remember, you can only do about eighth turns with the trigger guard there, so you got to kind of go back and forth until you find your setting. One more. Okay. I can look inside and I can see, I'm going to hold the hammer, my sear moves just far enough to release but with very, very little more travel. And you can feel that. And this one, if, to be flawless, wants just wants a tiny bit of a turn. Just right. Okay, now we can start to put it back together and we can check our trigger pull. First thing we're going to do is we're going to put the ambidextrous safety back on. Now as I mentioned it's got two tabs, it's not symmetrical, the lever drops on like that, a sixteenth of an inch allen key, and take and put this back on. Okay, we've got that back on. What we're going to do next is the external bolt release. The original factory part's a little bit tough to uh, use and hit with your fingers, so what we're going to do is we're going to reassemble this gun with a Majestic Arms extended bolt release. Stainless steel, nice thick diamond uh, pattern checkering, easy to grab, very simple, slides right into place like this, align the hole, take the little screw with the sixteenth of an inch allen key, and I'm just going to come right in, and I'm going to drop that into place, and just make that screw snug. The other thing we're going to do, we had mentioned earlier, that on the right side of the frame there is a magazine ejector that shoves your magazine out. It's a great little feature for competitive shooters. The original part is plastic and I don't see it lasting very long. I believe the part's going to take a lot of wear and tear. So Majestic Arms duplicated it in a 6061 aircraft grade aluminum with a hard coat anodized finish for a long life. We're going to take the original spring and plunger out of the plastic piece. We're going to put it right into the new Majestic Arms hardcore piece. And the way you do this is the plunger comes into the frame. It's a very simple arrangement. Just push it up and check it for motion. It's a stronger part than the original and it gives a great action. At this point you have to be careful because this part wants to jump out. So what we're going to do is we're going to put on a new pair of grips. We're going to go with a pair of Majestic Arms walnut thumb rest grips. We have them in both right-handed thumb rest and we have an ambidextrous pair. 
and there's not a lot of explanation here 332 Allen key put the two screws in and we got that side and now we'll do this side we'll need the screws from the original 332 Allen key Okay, we're ready to put our upper receiver back on and give it a check. Take your upper receiver with the bolt installed with the safety in the safe position. Set it onto its hinge, lock it together. There is no longer a magazine disconnector in this gun, so let's be mindful, she will fire without a magazine in place. So I'm going to turn my safety off, cock the action, nice. Now we're going to check the disconnector. Now the way you check your disconnector is to dry fire it, Maintain pressure on your trigger. Do not let go and cycle a bolt. That's exactly what happens when you fire your gun. Release your trigger. I even heard the click. It jumps back into place. I'll do that a couple of times. Let's see where our trigger is letting off now with the new kit. I've got my weight set here. That's two pounds as it is. The gun is not loaded. The safety is in the firing position. We're going to lift it up and we let off at a nice clean two pounds. That's a beautiful trigger job, lifetime warranty on all the parts, five year warranty on all the function. We're going to do one more upgrade to this gun. We're going to check to make sure we're not loaded, lock our safety, and we're going to remove the upper half. I'm going to take out the part called the frame lug. I'm going to show you an improvement we came up with. We'll use a 332 Allen key. We're going to undo this screw in the front. I'm going to take out the frame lug. I'm going to lay that there for the camera to look at it. The only tension in your hinges, you'll notice a rubber plug in your frame lug. When you close the upper to the lower, you're squeezing and compressing a rubber plug. And that's giving you tension in your hinges and your lockup. The problem that I've noticed with that is that as that rubber plug deteriorates, you'll start to feel play in the upper receiver to the lower. When there's play on your barrel, obviously your accuracy is going to suffer. So what we did was, we duplicated that part, but what we did, ours are all stainless steel with a stainless steel threaded column in the center. Instead of a rubber plug, we're going to adjust this column, it's infinitely adjustable, and we're going to achieve a perfect fit and lockup from the upper receiver to the barrel, and that's going to give you your best possible accuracy and function. And the way you do this, it's got two small little locking set screws on either side. Leave those loose, they'll be flush with the edges of the part. You're going to take the new Majestic Arms, we call it the Bank Vault Locking Block, because we're going to make your Ruger Mark IV lock up like a bank vault. We're going to drop it into the frame, 332 Allen key, put its retaining screw back into place. The block comes to you with two little Allen keys. One is a 50 thousandths of an inch, one is 1 16th. What we're going to do now is we're going to do a little trial and error. We're going to adjust that column and we're going to start to bring it up until we get a perfect fit and apply just a little bit of pressure to the receiver at the hinge area so that we get a perfect lockup. and when you close it it should feel like a fine quality shotgun. So I'm going to start a base point of bringing it up just a little bit above the surface of the part and I'm going to check my fit. i put it on. That one locks up really snug. Oh that's perfect. And now there is zero play from the upper to the lower. When it's locked up, it feels like one continuous piece of metal. Now let's just lock that adjustment and we'll be good to go for the next several years. As your gun develops wear and tear, merely recalibrate your adjustments and this bank vault locking block will keep your Ruger Mark IV tight as a drum and shooting beautifully for years to come. I'm going to take the 50 thousandths of an inch Allen key, put it into the screws, and just about a half a turn on each one, and what I'm doing is I'm locking the position now of that center column. And we're good to go. Take that, drop it right back into the frame. Put the retaining screw back into the frame. A 
let's check that one more time and see where we're at. We should have a perfectly shooting target gun right now. Look at that lockup. Perfect lockup. The part comes back out. It's even got a little bit of resistance when I undo it. That's good. Make sure she locks tight. No play. Your gun now has got a beautiful two pound trigger pull. Very short stroke on the trigger. I got you as close to a true single stage as we can get you. It'll fire without a magazine. The magazine disconnector is gone. We've got the hardcore magazine ejector in place. We've got an extended bolt release. I'm going to put a magazine in. Easy to close. Throws the magazines far out and lets off with a nice clean two to two and one quarter pound trigger pull. The first thing I'm going to add though is that the Ruger Mark IV, after watching this video, you'll see this one is a little bit tricky. It's trickier than a Mark III. It requires a decent amount of manual dexterity. I've done the best I can to illustrate that to you. If you don't think this is something you can handle, you can send us your gun or your frame assembly. Please call first for shipping instructions. We'll install any combination of Majestic Arms components for a flat rate of $49. One other thing I forgot to mention earlier, I'm going to take this gun apart again. Here in the shop we use Shooter's Choice FP10 Lubricant Delete to keep your gun running nice and smooth. I'm going to put a little bit on the trigger, on the bar, on both pivot points, on the bolt stop. And I'm going to put a little bit on both sides of my hammer and I'm going to give it a nice drop right on the top of the disconnector bar and a little drop on the locking wedge in the back. The other thing I like to do is just put a little bit on each side of the bolt. A couple of drops on each side. You can even smear it on with your fingers. And the Shooter's Choice FP10 Elite will keep your gun running nice and smooth and reduce wear and tear and friction all around. I really want to thank you all for watching our videos and buying our products. Thank you all so much.